do have a quorum. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to call the meeting sure. to order? Oh I move to start the library for meeting. All right. It is 7.03. Roll call. Vice Chair Andy Sakaris. Here. Maggie Burns. Here. Scott Gilbert. Here. Dina Phelps. Here. Chris Ray. Here. And Edie Hughes. Here. And excused, we have Chair Marie Hoda, Amy Wilson, City Council Liaison Chelsea Noonan Camp, and Inglewood School Liaison Dwayne Tucker. And currently, Gina Olberding is not present. And staff, we have Director Christina Underhill and Library and Cultural Arts Manager Bethany Lafferty. Alrighty, so uh, we have a new member tonight. So uh, why don't we go ahead and quickly go around the room and introduce ourselves. Uh, let's see, your name, how long you've lived in England, and what you do for you're not here. Um, and let's start over here with staff. Well, well, I'm Debbie Severa. I'm the executive assistant to Parks Rec, Library and Golf, and staff liaison. And I actually live in Inglewood, and I've worked for the city for 30 plus years. Wow. Hi, Chris. I'm Christina Underhill. I'm the director for Parks, Recreation, Library and Golf, and I've been with the city since uh, January of 2020. I'm Dina Phelps. I am not staff. I'm on the board. And I've lived in Inglewood three and a half years now. Yeah. And I've been on the board here. Um, when I'm not here, I'm the chief of staff um, for its for supply chain in aerospace. For aerospace. So, yeah. I'm Edie Hughes, and I've lived in Inglewood uh, two years and here and a half, two years. I uh, lived in Denver about 50 years. Um, and uh, uh, been on the board for a year and I'm uh, retired. Hi, friends. Um, I'm Bethany Lafferty, or Beth. Um, I'm the library manager, and um, I don't live in Englewood, but I worked here um, for 14 months. Just moved to Colorado last April uh, for this position from the data. Uh, Andy Sakaris, um, I've been on the board for three years now, feels like yesterday. Um, I've been in English for about four years and I'm the city clerk for this student. I'm Scott Gilbert, um, been on the board for seven years, lived here 27. Um, when I'm not here, I'm usually inventing reasons to hang out with my grandkids. <laughs> Dangerously short of frosty there. <laughs> That's what I'm you know, also. Uh, my name's Chris. Um, I'm, let's see, lived in Lowe's for eight months now. So very, very new. Uh, but I've lived in Colorado for 10 years. Um, and then I'm not doing this. I work for a software company called Vitaly, who do customer experience in the Linux software. So help brands provide better experiences, basically. Um, <laughs> Board member. So, oh, right. yeah. Cool. Welcome. Thank Welcome. you. Welcome. Um, I'm Maggie. I've been in Eagle Wood three years and on the board a year and a half. I know about a time. Um, and I'm a pastor here at Eagle I'm Gina. I'm late. <laughs> Let the record be known. <laughs> official, not official. It's first time since February, so real good. She's on the couch now. Sorry. I know. Don't kick me off. Um, let's see. So, yes, I've been on the board since. And I've been in Inglewood for 12, 13 years, something like that. Um, and what else? What oh, mean? in my real life, I work at the University of Colorado in prescription drug abuse prevention. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for all the welcomes. All right. For a welcoming bunch here. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. We'll move on to uh, the approval of the minutes uh, for the folks that. There are any changes to last month's minutes? Lots of motions. I 
move to approve the minutes. I'll second. Okay. Beautiful minutes. <laughs> Just then, thank you. Then a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed to these beautiful minutes? <laughs> uh, I don't see anyone on for public comments. If you are here to public comment us, please go to uh say it's no okay. <laughs> All right, and I'll turn it over for the reports. Right. I make notes in this spreadsheet. Does that need to be seen? Or do you need to have the electronic version? Um, so just want to note why we were only in 29 days versus 30. Um, we had a staff in service day. That was one of the things that were closed. Um, just kind of a preview with regard to page views for the website and the catalog. Google Analytics has like upgraded something. So I'm not 100% sure what this information is going to look like for July because it like transferred July 1 or July. And maybe it was like July 3rd since that was the Monday, first Monday of July that this. Something with Google Analytics is being upgraded or updated or something kind of out of my wheelhouse to do that kind of stuff. But I also learned that there's some kind of analytics that are available from Marmot Library Network, which provides our catalog services. Um, and when I compared what I've been looking at in the Google Analytics I use versus the information from Marmot, there's some pretty significant difference. So I don't actually know how fully accurate what I've been using is. So just preparing you for something that might look different or incomplete um, data than we, I report on the month of July next month, because I've been trying to figure it out. I was trying to do this transition on Google with what I have now, and I'm not sure if I did it successfully. Like I followed the assistant it had provided, but so I think I might have it, but um, I just want to prepare you that there might be some delay in getting accurate first, for that stuff going forward. Um, the other item I wanted to note, oh, in circulation, um, a significant drop in Google up. June was our first full month doing resident only access. Mm -hmm. um, so it's about half. The other thing we're hoping that we might see some uptick as people are successful every time they're trying to do borrows, but that's what we were encountering was people trying to borrow on Hoopla and saying, oh, I can't get it, I can't get it. Well, that's because the cap had been reached really early. So we're hoping to get back some people that may have given up on trying to use Hoopla because that was their experience. Um, so we are going to kind of ride that out for a little while. Um, if long term we see lower usage, um, one of the things that is that is being considered is using some of that funding to add other resources, um, either by putting more titles available in OverDrive, because Hoopla, remember the collection that's available is fixed by Hoopla. You don't select it, but OverDrive, we get to select what's in there, and there's a cost for everything that we choose. So we can grow what's available on that side. So that's just a, one example of what we might do if the usage tapers off and still stays kind of lower than what we have been seeing. Um, and then Access 360, I just want to mention this is the one that is going to get dropped. I don't know if I said that last month or not. Um, I might not have known that yet, but that one is going to end at the end of its um, of subscription time, which is August 31st. Um, so we will end having that and what we'll start introducing with the um, per school usage is the overdrive um, Sora is the, what it's called. It, that's a school specific interface for students to use where they basically have access through a 
school account to everything in our overdrive um, catalog that fits certain criteria. So that's what we're working towards in the region. Um, hey Beth, can I ask you just to, since we have a new board member, I think you were saying, Chris. Chris. You know, one of the things that I always notice, and I always remind myself, is the physical visitors, how it looks starkly different. Oh, right. Yeah, can you can just you. Get, provide an explanation, just in case that were to catch your eye, Chris? So what, um, what was, there's a couple years ago, people, like a door counter was installed at the entrance, and so it counts every body coming in and then going out. Mm -hmm. And so what I started to realize last year was that number seemed really inflated for how many people we actually see. Um, that's because it's counting in, in and in out. So if each person goes in and out. Um, so what I do is I use the same software, look at the same information, and I just cut it in half to give a more realistic mm -hmm. um, look at the number of actual people in a given month. So for physical visitors, oh. so like the data would say like a little over 9,000, but to say how many actual people, we just cut that in half as they go in and out. Okay. And it's still kind of an estimate because we have staff people who might come in a staff entrance and go out the mm -hmm. main entrance sure. um, and gets it off a little bit. So it's still still an estimate, but it's a, a little bit more accurate. The numbers also used to be inflated by pass through traffic. It doesn't occur anymore. Okay. True. Yeah. 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 So yeah. 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 guess would be we're probably up actually over last year in actual physical measures when we take those two changes into account. Yeah. I think the library has two doorways into it okay. from both sets of lobbies. Okay. But since March, we've had the one lobby uh, entrance point closed mm -hmm. for and is deemed as an emergency exit only out of the library. So if people only can come in this doorway here. Yeah. And, but we did used to have people who might like come in this way and go just use the library as kind of a first floor mm -hmm. hallway from one side or the other to the um, of the Civic Center. Gotcha. And the door counter you said was installed last year? Um, I think it was in like the library. Uh, in 15 minutes, was it? Why? Wow. Bring your items to circulation. Uh, check uh, out at this time. The original door counter. Probably 2019. Oh, okay. 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 Please save or print your work now. Um, yeah, so that's that's the visitor to make it a little bit more accurate. And I just um, for a little bit more context for you, Chris, I kept it during 20, the end of 2022 in the full numbers, just so it was consistent for the year. And then for January of this year, I started doing it in January. Nice. All the big jumps are for replying some change in protocol. Gotcha. Yeah. Not, not like people quick. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the, the yeah. marketing must have been great. But. Yeah. <laughs> With the, also with the change in the patrons registered, is that due to sort of switching systems? Yes. So, well, not so much that, that we actually cleaned out. Um, we did like a purge of inactive expired accounts at the beginning of this year. Um, we also reclassified um, the Englewood patrons um, because they, there were patrons um, Kind of codes in there that some of them weren't updated uh, for resident versus non resident. Um, and we got those cleaned up and updated. So this is definitely a much more accurate representation of kind of more active uh, card holders. Uh, so people who have had library cards sometime within the last three years and have used them at least once. Um, and, you know, the collection size obviously ups and flows with time. Um, meeting rooms and study room usage is still pretty strong. Um, I feel like study room sessions, we're actually seeing more because we're sticking to our two-hour time limit. So we're able to uh, allow more sessions in a day because we're not letting people stay in there for several hours at a time. Because when the rooms are full and somebody comes in, they won't necessarily say, they don't always ask, oh, is there a room available? Um, so like if somebody's in extra time in the study room, it kind of lets a person, makes a person feel like, oh, maybe those rooms are not available right now. And they don't even ask. So now that we ask people to leave when their two hours is up, it does make rooms more available if they get used more. So that's been really good. Um, 
volunteer hours. Uh, June was our first full month with um, adult volunteers. Um, usually, the last I think last year there was only like three adult volunteers. Um, but so this year we had eleven for June. We had eleven adult volunteers um, completing fifty-four and a half hours. And 2018 is completing 252 hours. It's great. Yeah, so that's really, really awesome. The adult volunteers have been really helping out a lot. We've been starting out with focusing on shelving and like just tidying up shelves and you know, keeping things um, neat and organized. And now we're starting to break into some bigger projects and things like that. Um, programming. It's all pretty steady. Um, the adult programs, they had two outreach programs. I believe that that was, they went to um, a couple of the senior centers. I, uh, but I think they went to two senior centers to, you know, um, sign up people for library cards and promote the homebound delivery service. Um, for adults, as of June 30th, um, there were 73 people. Oh, I'm sorry. There were 98 people total signed up for summer reading. Um, 20 people had picked up their first prize, 17 picked up the second level prize, and then two each um, picked up the third and fourth tier prize. So, like, basically finish. The whole challenge. So I think this was, you yeah, know, like a week, a little over a week ago. I think we're well over 100 participants for a summer reading, which is really great. We were hopeful that we'd have at least 50, so we definitely doubled what we were hoping for. Um, and then as of July 2nd, um, there are 579 um, babies, kids, and teens registered for summer reading. 78 kids have completed. Um, and I had, oh yeah, Charles K is in first place for the summer reading trophy. So that's, they have, I think it's the most number of time or books read. I don't remember how she uh, calculates it, but the most participants from that school. Um, and so that that's like the kind of internal uh, competition of Angle in public schools. So that's, I don't remember who last, won last year. I feel like it was a different school last year and one that hadn't won. Do you remember? I can't remember. Was it Clayton? No, my family was a different one. I don't know. It was one that like historically hadn't ever won. And so they were super excited about it. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if any of that changes. Um, but a lot of really good stuff happening um, with the, the kids' programs and teen programs. Oh, I've got one last thing going back to circulation. I just wanted to highlight again the COVID passes. Um, another, you know, increase over the last month of um, the last hundred five passes were checked out. Um, the uh, majority in Denver and its gardens, there were 27, and 21 for Denver Museum of Nature and Science, and 16 for the Butterfly Pavilion. Oh, 16 for Wings of the Rockies. That's really good. Everything else was under 10. But all of them were used. Even the Richards Museum got one checkout. Right. That's enough. That, I think that's the first one. Um, so yeah, all 10 museums had passes utilized in June. 100% of the passes were utilized. Well, um, so there's multiple passes for um, specific days. Yeah. Um, but we have 10 different organizations that you can get passes from. And mm -hmm. at least one pass from all from each organization got utilized. Last month. Is there a way we could get like uh, testimonials? That's probably the right word, but like everyone I talk to is like, oh my God, I will absolutely become a library member because of that only, right? Like that's, um, you know, I'm thinking of ways we can sort of get it out there. I'm not sure if we have those people's information or if they would be like, I couldn't have gone because of the cost or something that we can sort of highlight and talk about or at least point people to. Yeah. Like how easy it is. And, <laughs> you know, like, is that also with the parks passes as well as that still happening? So the yeah, with the parks passes, we do. There's um, the national park or sorry, state park passes. 
the state library provides us with a survey okay. that we actually are supposed to return back to the state library. So we don't actually keep okay. those. Um, and I don't actually know. I think they mostly want to know like what day of the week you went and which park you went to. It's a pretty, pretty simple survey. Um, but yeah, it would be nice to try to get some feedback on the culture pass use. Um, and there might be a way for us to do that. Because I think in the text keeper, they have to put in their email address so we can always find out if we can do a follow up once they check something out that includes a little survey. It'd be nice to um, <clears throat> maybe feature it in the Englewood magazine. Yeah, it's been in the last one. one. Yeah. yeah, it was in, I think it was in the current one. And so maybe, I don't know if it was in the summer one. It's definitely in the one for the spring months. And then for the fall, we're going to be featuring the book sale and the book bookings. But I think there's actually, there's about four or five spots for photos in the current guide. So we might put that photo back in again because we have well, communications made us one. On the uh, internet computer usage, um, is there a trend you're seeing that accounts for the year over year? Drop? Um, it was like, uh, I was about 25% drop in hours there. Um, no, I don't know. I can't think of anything. Yeah. Maybe it would just be cool if it was less. Yeah, because like if you're looking at it a month at a time, it is still less. Because uh, I obviously for the year to date, we had that chunk of time where we were closed. Yeah. Um, so nothing caught your eye or anything. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I could potentially think of is we might be having a reduction in the number of computer guest passes we're handing out because those were only for 30 minute increments yeah. and they kind of would get handed out like you might give one person four passes but is that really four different uses yeah not really the library will close in five minutes please finish your work and head toward the exit thank you for visiting so we were we've been trying to encourage people to do um, get at least the computer use card, right. which allows them two hours right off the bat. Right. So that's going to, if you use a two hour card versus four 30 minute passes, it's going to skew the numbers. So that potentially is something because we have been trying to encourage people to do that. It seems like every time I come in, they're just as busy as that. Yeah. And I think that one of the other reasons why we've been um, encouraging people to get computer use cards is it helps give us a little bit more information about the users in the library so we at least have a name um, sometimes if there are people who cause disruptions because when we don't know anything about them if they're logged in with a guest pass there's no way to glean any information about the person at all so that was kind of one of the motivators for let's really encourage people like sell the fact that they can get two hours and the card is good for a year and so we have been probably issuing a few more of those how do they get the card? The computer use card only requires a name and a birth date. So they don't have to have photo identification. Yeah, just at the at one of the service desks. Yeah. Service desk. Either reference or circulation. You can have two hours a day. Mm -hmm. Not more than two hours a day. They can have more time if they request it and a staff member has to extend it. We've been trying to work with our uh, software for um, that is used for logging into the patron computers to automatically extend time if there's uh, free computers available. Um, we haven't really seen whether or not that's actually working or not, because nobody really stays beyond that a lot of the time. They just leave when their two hours is up, or they only use, they use less than two hours. So I haven't, and when we have people, they're so used to asking for time before their time runs out that staff will extend it for another 30 minutes from that point. So it kind of skews whether the software can actually work to do the automatic oh, extension. Okay. So, but again, we don't have a ton of people who are really staying more than two hours at a time on the computer. Okay. And the, the, the tech lab, if people request to use the tech lab, that actually is a three hour time limit in there. And so that's something the supervisors and I have been discussing as well is we do often have open computers. So we were discussing whether or not we would just ex make the computer use for a day 
three hours instead of two. Um, but there's always the option for people to have more time if they request it to a staff member than I have to manually extend it. What got two people excluded last month? Did anything stand out? Um, I guess it wasn't the murder or anything. <laughs> I think one was for <laughs> just a violation of prior exclusion. Yeah. Yeah, that was one. Yeah. Um, I guess it wasn't too often. I can't remember what they were. A lot have been just, hey, they've been here before. We already asked them to leave before, and now they're back. Cool. And so we extended longer. They cause a disruption. Ejection is like a one time, and then exclusion is sort of like a longer period. Yeah, so ejection is just for the day. Okay. Um, I mean, technically it's 24 hours, but we just say leave and then don't come back for the rest of the day. Sure. Um, and then, yeah, the exclusion is anywhere from 45 to a maximum of 180 days. Gotcha. Um, one of those exclusions that was basically a violation of previous exclusion um, was reissued as a new exclusion for 180 days. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, because the, the prior was 120, so they did 180. Yeah. Um, and then the others, those are just things where like maybe we needed to call the mobile response unit for somebody or just um, a call for medical assistance or things like that. Um, just general disturbances. Um, and then the verb, we're really trying to focus on a lot of the verbal warnings formally so that we can have this foundation for we've told you very specifically what the expectations are. Now you're out. So th that's helping a little bit. I think there's a little security also is probably helping. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. It's, it's much more visible. So we have to all. Yeah. Center are now closed. Please enter the building. We will reopen tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. Thank you. Any other questions about those? Well, you know me, I could have to yeah. I'll put it in the document. I did not have any updates for the action plan. Um, they are doing things here. <laughs> just because there's just really nothing new. Like, we're still working on a bunch of different things. But there wasn't like a new update. So like we're still working on um, getting together all the items for the kit keeper, which is the we're focusing initially on the book club kits. And then um, we'll be adding in the story time bins from children's, um, the board games, and uh, some old school ones that Kevin really has. Um, we are going to be hopefully redirecting the way we use the uh, state grant for libraries from the Phil Colorado State Library um, for this next year. Um, rather than utilizing it to essentially reimburse our book budget for purchasing prize books for summer reading, um, because the goal is for this book sale to fund that purpose. Um, what we're looking to do with at least half of the grant money is to re, um, replace some of the story time bins, um, acquire some additional story time bins to put into this, um, you know, physical, non-traditional collection, and then also build a book club collection of juvenile fiction titles. We did have a staffing service day that you could have with the staff development fire. What's that? You could add your in service to the staff development part. Yeah, I know. I just didn't have anything really out, like exciting to share about it, just that we did it. I mean, That's I guess okay. I could put that in there. I think since one of the goals was to hold two staff in service days. True. That does meet one of the goals. Okay. Events. I'll add that then retro for you. Because um, it was really, I mean, the biggest thing that we did on the, the in service day was we did several kind of just like icebreaker team building activities where people just got to know each other a little bit better because we have um just from 2023 alone i think we had 10 new employees 
Um, that's sad. I think yeah. it's high value. Um, and then we just and then we had some kind of smaller training sessions and then time for people to just work out projects. Um, so that was good. And we did a call up which was actually really fun rather than ordering a book. Um, and I don't think that there's really um, and I'm still like working on stuff with the the school. Um, and like I mentioned about overdrive and Sora, I'm still kind of working through that and some of the details with Marmot and the school district and making sure I can connect with the people I need to during the summer. So, and the ever present struggle of standing. So that's kind of what has the first mention. Are you? Oh, I was just saying, are you going to count that when we rolled in with students into your patrons? Or they're yeah. already they're already in there, okay. so they're out. They should already be included. Okay. Um, but I still don't think it's an accurate representation, even though we were told it was uploaded in January. Um, for the simple fact that one of our employees that has four children and people with multiple schools and their accounts were not in there. <laughs> so unless it's just it's harder to look it up than we think, but we weren't able to confirm anything but they're not supposed to be something that we look up to do anything with they're just there to provide access so i'm i'm not really sure there, i don't know if there's a way on our like end to test it but yeah those are already in grid. and as they drop off they the school sets them up with specific expirations based on um the students either like graduating out or having left the school and so like on the school side they update that so that when they update it into Marmot those are supposed to drop off as like these are these accounts don't aren't valid anymore something like that. Are you seeing any slowing down in the staff turnover or is it going about the same thing? We're about the same right now. Um, we have one vacancy from somebody that left unexpectedly in May um of a part-time position but we're holding it open um with the hopes that our effort to get um budget approval for converting some part-times into full-time so we're gonna we're gonna hang on with this one part-time vacancy to see if that gets approved or not if it doesn't um for whatever reason we'll hide we'll fill it but we're going to try to hang on until we know because and then if it does get approved then we're already halfway to the full time position would that be a supplemental appropriation you're looking for or next year's this, budget this is just for in next year's budget yeah. so this would be part of the budget it wouldn't be a subject at all has there been has there been a high turnover but people also here yes okay so this library has uh 20 no 19 part-time employees. Okay. Um, so that's a lot of part-time positions. Yeah. Um, and from the time that I started last end of last spring to about now, I think well, we added four positions in January. So I guess there was previously what, 15, 16. So 10 of those have turned over in the last couple. Full time is holding steady. Full time is holding steady. Full time. And that, um, through a budget supplemental request to City Council of January, we were also approved for two new full time positions. Yeah. So we have added two full time positions. And the two or the four part timers that we got in January, um, they're just not, it's just not as effective as we were hoping for in terms of stability of scheduling. Sure. So that's why we're looking to convert those to full time. Do we have like a, is there like a singular reason or a couple reasons we know about the churn on the part time? Or is it just like that? Um, I don't know. Like some of it is just people had other opportunities. Um, they moved back to whatever state that they had been, you know, had moved from originally. Um, Full-time positions come so up. So we had a couple of left sure. to go, yeah, other library districts um, to pursue for, uh, full-time work, or they got like a job at a library closer to where they lived, mm -hmm. things like that. That's a couple of the reasons that have happened over the last year. Sure. Some things that come back. 
Yeah. Year end lives. Yeah. And that, that city government, I mean, Denver is the same thing. We're losing all of our part timers to, like, and, and it's really hard to build part time staff at governmental levels mm -hmm. when we're competing against yeah. $30 an hour at McDonald's sometimes. And the other, the other hard thing we have with our existing part timers is the ability for some of them to work the number of hours we're looking for because some of them come up against if they have. Um, health insurance through Medicaid, they mm -hmm. have limitations to how much income they can earn. Right. So that's been a new problem we've been encountering over the last like six to eight months. You pay a certain amount for part-time position? Um, I mean, all the part-timers are right now in between like $18.50 and $22 an hour, depending on their experience and education where we're at. I mean, technically, the position started 1760, but everybody's a little bit higher on it. Do you develop your sort of volunteer core into sort of more needy duties? Do you think that will help sort of alleviate some of your staffing strategy? Or add to it? Um, no, I mean, it doesn't help in the sense of it, it does, it can't replace the things we need staffers to do. It does alleviate some of the kind of, you know, I hate to use the word menial, but like the tasks that don't require like employees to use, you know, computers or look at patron information and things like that. Like it helps free up time for that. Um, but yeah, we're just, just struggling with also just the format in which the employees are assigned their roles right now. So we're trying to evaluate and hopefully redesign that if we can, but it's going to require some changes to the staffing schedule, which not all of our current employees can fulfill. So that's another issue. We're trying to figure out how we work around it. Okay. Yeah. I got for them. And we don't have any I think, I think next month we'll have all of our like end of year great requests because we started talking about that at our last supervisor's meeting to start thinking about what else do we want to request for the rest of the year. As part of our library for duties, uh, the city assigned us three thousand um, dollars a year. That uh, in the past, we have sort of come up with ideas. This time, we're sort of turning it over to the staff to sort of provide us ideas. So we're not being like, here, there's something you don't want. <laughs> um, uh, and it's been things like supporting additional staff to go to conferences this year, supporting candy at some of the, the events, and sort of supporting some things. And so uh, we have a remaining of a thousand left this year, and then it'll replenish in 2024. But um, that's what sort of that line item is. And, and we're sort of trying to use it to fill holes with not a massive amount of funds, but I think it's, it's definitely helped in, in key situations. Randy, um, in new business. Train running again? Train's back on. All right, good. The thing that folks care about in the world is the train. Um, <laughs> Old business um, review um, for the uh, ELP request for consideration. Uh, I don't know if we have any major updates on that. The one. only thing that, that we had discussed last time was whether or not we needed to stipulate that um, forms submitted to the city are subject to CORA. Um, we do not have to do that. Um, and Tamara Niles, the city attorney, was like, you don't, you don't have to put it on there. Like any, any communication that occurs between citizens and the city in any format is subject to CORA. Uh, or uh, the Colorado Open Records Act. So if somebody wanted to request copies of records and communications and forms like such as this, then. Uh, but she did confirm also that if somebody completed. Um, a request for reconsideration submitted it to the library and there was another entity that requested the records. Um, personal identifying information would be redacted. That's yes. Oh, really? I think it was yeah, the top, top section. Would be, yeah, I think it would be the name up. and like phone number, address, and email would all be redacted. And that could change with the court case that's currently going on. Um, 
Can yeah, they're that? doing. They were supposed to be doing um, like oral arguments for the appeal sometime this month. Um, I'm sorry to catch you up. What this form is is if, if a citizen wants to have a book removed or reclassified within inside the library, this gives them a way to do it that isn't just I don't like this. Please remove it. They have to go through a sort of an extensive sort of request and justification uh, and process as sort of libraries are becoming cut points for uh, political discussion, uh, sort of taking those pieces out of it. But uh, I believe the name wouldn't be for it is. Maybe so. Maybe it would just be phone. I believe. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so maybe but, the name but, would remain, but the other information would be redacted. She did say that some of that information would be. Um, and then the only other thing I did add was at the very last sentence of the top paragraph, the manager may contact you by phone and you will receive a written response within 30 days of the date your request is received. So just clarifying that you might have some communication and then a final written response would happen. Have you ever had anybody? No. Oh, gee. My next question, does that happen often at all? It has not happened since I've been working at this library. Okay. Um, and the feedback I've gotten from other um, library staff that have been here longer, they have not heard that it's happened either. Um, I think. That's funny because it's so hot. Okay, we just stop tell me more or whatever. We yeah, yeah, there's not. Um, I, and I think in the. In yeah, yeah. the camp. Yeah. In the 13 years I was at my. Former library, I I only encountered one request, and it was kind of it was a pretty weak request. Sure. So the item was not removed. Um, and then I'll, any other inquiries I ever had were just kind of conversational, where people would ask, like, I don't want my kid checking this out, and we would you know direct parents that. They're responsible for overseeing what their child checks out. It's perfectly fine for them to limit that. Mm -hmm. But that's not the library's responsibility. So um, I haven't experienced it. It's definitely something that a lot of libraries are just trying to prepare for if it happens, that we're not caught without any procedure in place. Sorry. So. It's stuff's all organized on social media now, so it could definitely come our way. Yeah. Is it, is and I will uh, just as a side note, let you know that um, the state of Illinois has formally banned book anything. Mm -hmm. So there are people in the state of Colorado in the library world that are starting to discuss this. Yeah. Banned book ban. Yeah. 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 You, you couldn't request that of something be banned from a lot of public libraries. And is it up to this group's like discretion to? Review they send that bank call or we like through city. So the way it would work is that initially, like myself and several of the library staff would review the initial um request okay. and make a determination and then respond back to the requester. Gotcha. If the requester was not happy with that decision, they can ask they could then in turn say we would like the library board to you know discuss it further. And so then it would be brought to the library board either as a whole or small. Like subcommittee to review and discuss and make a, a, a final decision, and that decision would be final. Gotcha. It's all for you. Feel that. Yeah. So we need to make a motion to approve this. Yes. I will make a motion to both approve uh, the LP request. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Okay. All opposed? All right, uh, moving on to staff's choice. I'll just add, we have some cool events happening in July, so you're aware of it. Sunset concerts start every Thursday out here. I'm at the amphitheater in the Civic Center area. We are doing happy hours starting at 4 p.m. till 5.30 with some fun games and uh, food trucks, and then the concert starts at 6 p.m. There'll also be food trucks and alcohol in case you miss the happy hour. Um, and then July 12th, which is tomorrow, uh, Pirates Cove Adult Night. So no kids in the park. Sanita's Brewing will be there as well, serving beer. And it's all about the 90s. So if you were a 90s person, 
What was what was what are you calling that? Uh, Pirates Cove oh, Adult oh, Night. Oh, oh, Adult Night. Yeah. And yes, the train is up and running. If you haven't had a chance to visit the farm yet, please do. We have some really cool animals in there. Alpacas are cute. Well, I was raising children in the 90s, so unless they're going to play like rappy songs. Like... <laughs> are there any upcoming things that you'll need sort of volunteer support for, like the block party, or just so we can sort of plan for them? Yeah. The block party, we actually just got an email from Tony Arnoldy about participating in the block party, so that will be. It's August next month. Is it August? Yeah, it's August. It's the 26th of August. So, again, we do that as kind of like a side communication. So, like, I think that's what we did last time. Um, and see if anybody wants to help out with it. Um, I believe it was, it's like, is it four to 10 usually? Mm -hmm. So the library only maintained the table though from four to eight last year. We didn't, we didn't stay all the way till yeah. one. You don't want to be there after. So. Yeah. Yes. So, <laughs> yeah, we might need to do that when we might just go till seven o'clock. Um, because that kind of is it on Saturday? Yes, yeah, on yeah. Saturday. Um, because it does kind of skew our staffing hours because on Saturdays people don't usually work past five o'clock. Um. But um, so like we only do two hours or three hours of things that would probably be easier. Um, what is the date? Is it 26. Okay. You didn't know the date, but uh, oh, this was about these uh, That's what she was asking. But we do plan on going, and so that'll probably be something we'll we'll see if we can have like one or two volunteers each hour. So I'll I'll follow up with an email for that. If you haven't been to the block party, we shut down Broadway. Yeah. It's the really how, far, how far is it shut down? Um, it's just three blocks, um, pretty yeah. much from Hamden's uh, north. It's about King Supers. It's The next block, mm -hmm. oh, we might have extended it one more. Yeah, I was going to say, I think. Get your stuff. And I think the only other thing I can yeah. possibly think of that we might like volunteers is maybe the trunk or tree. In October, yeah, that's in October because that's always on a Saturday. Also, any burning questions, comments, or concerns from the board members? All right, well, speak up. So, if not, so we're going to move to adjourn. Okay. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Ten minutes.